just due to my work in here. Uh, sorry. Did you hear me? Yeah. Okay, um, last October actually we had a this, uh, construction going on in this place because to bring, bring the facility. Uh, after that, we done some uh, kitchen work, and they were asking for extra money. So I said, "Okay, we're gonna do ourselves in this section. Don't worry, right?" And so we did it. And uh, me at that time was uh, John was here. John was here for just a couple, you know, a couple weeks. John and uh, brother Albert Hunt, three of us. And I put the letter up and I carried the, you know, jib rock and uh, put it on the top. And I thought because of that I hurt myself. That was my thinking. Since then I had this knee problem. I'm saying this because I want to give God the old glory. And uh, I've been suffering with this pain in my knee. I cannot go up stairs. I cannot go down. I have to go one step at a time, you know, like this. And I was very frustrated. I went to MRI and uh, I paid myself. I can wait for a year, right? And uh, they couldn't find nothing, only there's a very mild you know, uh, arthritis in there, in my bone. So I went to see a doctor, a specialist, and he said, maybe it's my cartridge on my knee, getting thinner, and so therefore you're going to get pain, and all you can do is lose weight. And I said, well, I'd love to do that, but it doesn't go that way, right? And then he told me, you cannot do any other exercise for motion. You know, you're sitting on the side, bicycle, and you cannot press, but they just have motion, you know, exercise. So I said, excuse me, you want me to lose my weight and you want me to only do the motion? How am I going to lose my weight, right? And he said, well, that's what you have to do. And you have to live with it. I can give you a shot, uh, not the cortisone shot, but it's a, with another kind of things. So I said, if you give me that, well, it's going to be cured. He said, no, every nine months, you have to redo it. You're going to have a shot. And I go like, oh, man, I said, I can't live like that. But he got no solutions, right? He had no solution. Back to that, no solution. So what I did, I said, well, then, no choice. I did the plan of God, right? And you all know, sister, if who's coming back next Sunday, I can ask her, that would be her last Sunday being with us. She came and she began to pray for me. All I would internally know that I cannot go upstairs because it's very difficult for me to go up and going down. She prayed for me for a few days and uh, surprising. <coughs> okay, surprise, surprise. Uh, we had an ex uh, inspection, a fire inspection. I have to go up to the third floor community home. I ran up. There was no pain. I ran up, I ran down. This is what God does, you know, this is miracle. Doctor said every nine months I need to inject it and injection and it only lasts for nine months I have to carry on. Because my cartridge is so, you know, I get thinner and uh, this is the reason I got pain. But you know, that's what doctors say. That's not what God say. God can do a lot of things, amen? God can raise the dead. God can heal the uncurable disease. God can do great things. And I'm so grateful that you know he loves me so much that he sent the person right. You know, this is the right time because I went to all the doctors, right? I went to the MRI, I went to the doctors and doctors. this is what the uh, conclusion doctor has given to me. But when God began to touch me and I got healed. I got healed. Amen? Amen. 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 Our God is great and awesome God. This morning I would like to share the word of God with you from the Genesis chapter 24. Okay? Turn with me. My topic, my theme is Kitu releasing the blessing of God. How many of us like to be blessed? How many of you love to have blessing of God in your life? Let me see. Okay. I love the blessing. Who doesn't like blessing? Raise your hand. <laughs> I want to talk to you. No. Oh, after you don't want a blessing? Oh, something is wrong. Okay, I want a blessing too, right? 
And how do we get the blessing? And we're going to see from the uh, Eliza, who's a servant of uh, Abraham. Okay? We're going to see from him. Turn to the uh, chapter 24. I don't know whether we can get that or not. Uh, where's Joseph? Uh, Daniel, can we get the chapter 24 Genesis? Please put it on the screen, please. Okay. Now, let me read to you. Abraham was now old and well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the chief servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh, and I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, and that you will not yeah, you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living. But will go to the, my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you come from? And this is what I said, so Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me an oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If a woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camel and left, taking with him all kinds of good things from his master. He set up for Abraham and Naharim and made his way to the town of Nahor. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this servant? If you look, you read the uh, Genesis chapter 15, he's talking about it. When God came to Abraham and said, I'm going to give you the offspring, I'm going to give you the blessing. And Abraham said, wait a minute God, I have nobody, you know. Only one who's going to inherit all my goods and everything that I have, that will be my servant, Eliezer. Okay? Eliezer will be the my, uh, one who will inherit everything. And God said to Abraham that time, said, no, it's not going to be Eliezer, it's going to be your son. I'm going to give you the son. Okay? And this servant, he is the one who in charge of everything. He is the one, now, Abraham is asking to go. The key to releasing a blessing is very simple. Yeah. You know, We all want to be blessed, but we don't want to do this. Number one is we need to be honest. Okay. How many of you we know? How many of you know that we all are the servants of God, right? Are we the servants of God? Yes. Are we the children of God? Amen. If we are the children of God, then we are the servants of God. Amen. Because in, in in the New Testament, we all are the witnesses, right? He said, all of us, those who are baptized and have been filled, and you go. He said, go and everywhere to preach the gospel, right? So in a sense, we all are the servants of God. Am I correct? Yeah. We're the servants of God, same time we're the children of God. Now, we're the servants of God. Now, question is this. We are the servants of God that we need to do these things. Okay? And we need to learn this from the Elijah. This is, Elijah is the one who everyone trusts everything. Okay? Now, he told this man to go. Why? Because he need to find a wife for the Isaac. Isaac, right? Isaac made a wife, and now Abraham asked him to go back to his own town to fight. But in here, the important thing is this. In here, he's not only going there, but he's taking everything with him. He's taking a tent camel. You know what camel look like, right? 
And when he took the ten camel, you think this camel going empty hand? Huh? You think he's gonna ride in there? I don't think so. I think he's gonna put so many things there. All the good things, scripture said. All the good things are Abraham's household. Go to going to find the wife of Isaac. Not his own master, but master's son. Who's, who's going to have every right over that household. Now, the lady is taking all of this going to the, this place. Think about this. God has entrusted us so many things. Okay? God has given us life and He entrusted entrust so many things into our hands. And asking us to take care of it. What do we do? Look at Eliza. And take him over with all the good things in that house of his taking. And if this man is not honest, what do you think he will do? Maybe I take some gold in my pocket. Maybe I take this into my pocket. I hide it. And I'm maybe taking some. Don't you think so? Because it has so much, right? You think he ever will write him down everything that he took? I don't think so. Just like God entrusts everything in our hand, now Abraham entrusts all this into the hands of his head servant. As we take it. Now, head servant have responsibility of this. But if this head servant had a double minded man, then, then what would you think he would do? He would do just as what we all think he would do. He probably take some and hide it somewhere. Why not? Since my master is so rich and he entrusts everything to me, why don't I do that? The key to releasing the blessing of God, we need to be honest before the Lord, with what we have. It's not only the finance, it's our gift, it's our talent. Not only the, oh, people think, okay, I give money, then everything's going to be okay. No, that's not true. People ask me, just pray for me, God to bless me. I told this one brother, I said, if I bless you, and God begins to bless you, I want you to give your life, and I want you to serve him. I want morning and evening, I want two jobs. I said, look, what do you want? What kind of blessing do you want? Financial blessing, or health blessing, or what blessing do you want? And I know God has called his life, okay, into ministry, but this brother is refusing. Refusing. And he thought, okay, since I have made so much money, I can come and give some money to the potters, and then Pastor Deborah is going to forget it because I gave him the money. <laughs> so funny, isn't it? No. God is looking for the honest in our lives. Okay? Honest with your talent, huh? the gift God has given to you. That huh? these servants had that quality. For Abraham to totally trust. Can somebody open the door for uh, yeah. Abraham totally trusts his, his servants. Let me ask you this question. Does God totally trust in you for the things that he has given to you? Ah, now we're we talking. Does God totally trust you that you will do? Or that God your mind and walking away for your own. You like to have a chance to maybe take one third of whatever he was taking, hide it, put it aside, and this for my retirement. <laughs> but he's willing to go all the way, right? The honesty. Are we honest before God? Today is communion day, right? Once a month we have this communion. Well, it's not a ritual. I wish you could do it every, every Sunday. But if I do every Sunday, people will think this as a no meaning at all. We need to be honest. We come to the table of God and examine ourselves. And I am honest with God. And does God totally trust me with what He has given to me? You see, we are the people receive so much from the Lord. He given us so much of our, not only finances, a gift, okay? What do we do with it? As God has entrusted you with all the things, are you living up to that point? That's the question. Are we? 
Are we honest with God? Are we saying to God, Lord, wait a minute. Let me just give you the 70% of my life. 70% of what you've given to me. 70% of my gift. Not 110%. This sister Im, who was uh, doing the healing ministry, and uh, I told her, I said, look, why don't you just go everywhere to start healing? She said, I will not do that. Whoever comes to me, I will do. I will never reject that. Even how late, I will pray for that. But I will never go and do for them. And I said, why is that? Why can't you go and do for them? I would, if I were you, I would have gone it. He said, no, because nobody will appreciate it. If I do that, they will not appreciate what God is doing. They think they can buy me off. She said, one of these ministers in Korea, no? Government guy, come guy. Just call her and said, come, I will send my driver, you come. She said, I don't care who you said, I'm not coming. You want to hear, you come to my place. <laughs> she hang up the phone. And he called again. How much you want, I will give it to you. He said, you want it, you come, I'm not coming. Eventually he had to come because, you know, he wants to be healed, right? We need to have that kind of a bonus. And I look at him and I say, wow, what a bonus. She looked, she's uneducated. She never gone to Bible school like we do. She never had a master's degree. But the power in her is so powerful. She said, why should I? You want to hear you come. Huh? You, don't, you don't ask me to come and hear for you. That means nothing. You think you can control me. I, I don't bow down to money. I don't bow down to power. You want to hear you come. I said, then I shake her head. I said, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Huh? Why? Because we don't see many people like that. You know, in these days, people who have a gift like that, they would love to go be a friend to the riches, right? She went to her. And I said, thank you. Why? Because whatever the God has entrusted her, she's doing the right job. She's honest before the Lord. You know? She's honest before the Lord. Okay? And the second thing, you need to be faithful. This, sir, had seven of uh, uh, Abraham. He was faithful. He's willing to go. Huh? He said, what if I go there, what if she don't come, what if they don't follow me? Everybody said, if you went there, they don't follow, then it's okay, you have to do it. He never been there, oh man, maybe he was there, okay? But now he said, what if it doesn't happen? See, he's not complaining, he's just asking the question. But we, if God asks us to do something, if we are, you know, we ask a lot of questions. God, what if this? What if that? And how this thing that happen? Uh, what am I getting out of it? <laughs> no. This servant of Abraham was very faithful. He did not run away with the things that he was carrying. Now, think about this. If we look at it in 24, a little later, the things that uh, he gave to the Rebecca, the gift. Okay? First of all, he gave her the nose ring. Wavy or uh, Becca, it's gold nose ring, okay? A Becca, Becca means like a 5.5 gram of nose ring, okay? And the two gold bracelets weigh 10 shekel, that's about 11.5 grams, okay? So think about it, he got so much gold was carrying on him too, huh? And tank camel, worth so much of things with the tank camel. Can you imagine you have a 10 limousines? You put every good thing to fill it up at uh, that 10 limousine. Huh? So you are going to uh, travel in far away. How about you just take the 10 limousine and go to another country? You don't have to be the servant ever again. You can be the master of yourself, right? But Eliza was a very faithful servant. He's a very, very faithful servant. Huh? That's why Abraham asked him, you promise me? Put his hand on the thighs of Abraham and said, promise me. And he promised me. See, we promised God. I said, God, if you do this, I promise 
I will do. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Where, how long did you keep the promise? How long did you keep the promise? When things okay? When things not working out and you just sell it off? Oh, no. No. This man was a very faithful man. That's why he went there. Huh? He prayed, verse 12, he said, Then he prayed, Oh Lord God of my master Abraham. He didn't say, Oh my God, my God, please have. He said, He called to God who was God of his master. He didn't come to say, Jehovah, the, you know, the provider, please help him. No. He did it. He prayed. And many times, okay, not once, many times, he prayed, you know, he prayed to God of Abraham, oh, you promised, this is my, my master wants, please, when you when, when, when arrive at the place, he prayed again, God, please send somebody, and then if, I, if it really this is the person, you send someone, and she will give me the water, and she will feed my camels, and she will willing to do it. He put a so difficult condition on God. Know? Why? Because he trusts God. Because he believed God. He believed. He saw the God of his master how he blessed him. Okay? He saw, he witnessed it. How many of you witnessing what God is doing in your life? And yet, oh, when difficult time comes, like, God, I cannot trust. God, I cannot look. Let me do my way. Keep going on. Go on your way. Your ways are high ways. Your head. ways will take you to the hell. Okay? True. You can say, wow, Pastor, you're so tough today. Why so harsh? Let me tell you, I am harsh. Because we're in the table of God today. If you're looking into yourself and see, and, uh, and asking God, where am I? And then you are not fit to have in this table. You are not fit to be in this table. Church is not accessory to your life. Church is where you come, you meet God, and you change. That is church is all about. Church is not where you come and talk about you know, what you are doing for God. Church is the place where you come, you worship God, you change. You worship God and you change. This Eliza saw what God is doing on the life of Elijah and Abraham. He believed. When he prayed, he had no doubt. He said, Then what happened? Why is always Pastor, are you talking from Bible? Bible is only story. It's not working with me, will it? Very funny. Why not? I work with me. Whenever God doesn't work with me, there's time when I'm disobedient. When I'm disobedient. When I want to do my way, it doesn't work. Huh? When I want to do my way, it won't work. You know, when we purchase this community home, right? I make a one one most stupid deal with the owner. Because why? My heart is I want to get the place ASAP. As soon as we get, we want to move in. And we want everything to be ready. So when the art gallery right now, there was some kind of a, 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 those a convenience store. It used to be the drug dealing place, so we shut it down, right? Now I make a deal with the owner, I said, we will give you the money. We, have, we sold the place and uh, we, we had the money, we had a hundred over thousand dollars. So we we'll give you this money and let us go in first and fix it. Sure, if I don't, I don't meet the date, I will lose everything, right? So the owner said, sure, fine, come and fix it, everything. So we start fixing it. The day is getting nearer, getting nearer. And we don't have all the money we needed. And I said, no, we need the money. If I don't have this, all of this, we're going to forfeit uh, $120,000. We're going to forfeit it. All. So we need that. And uh, it wasn't happening. We did everything we can. We are like over $20,000. Like of $20,000. And I had to pray. I said, Lord, what do you want? I'm willing to let go. We did all, and now I can always 
Look to the man's way. We can do it. If I look to the man's way, there's many ways to go. Many ways to do it. But I want God to prove to me that he's God who supplies all my needs. And that wasn't for my need. That was for the people. I said, Lord, if this is what you give it to me, you've got to prove to me. It's not about just two cows, okay? Huh? It's not about just submit. I said, Lord, now we, by faith, I paid this guy's money. Now if it doesn't gonna happen, we're going to forfeit it. It's up to you, right? Uh, my lo our lawyer makes a little mistake. So one, there was a one-day mistake. On the, right on the day, we didn't have the money. Then he come, you know what, I made a mistake. So actually, the day is tomorrow. I said, are you sure? He said, yes, so don't worry. You got one more day to work on it. And I said, Lord, what are you going to do? I had a group of uh, uh, spear girl team was with me. They were waiting. It was, I think, 26. We delayed it two days because I want to see what God is doing. We delayed it two days. He said, Lord, please, send. There's no money. And the last day, I need to go. I have to go. I have no more choice. Now I cannot delay anymore. And I have to go. And I said, Lord, I have to leave today. I said, I don't care. Not happen. Tomorrow is all going to go. All the work that we've done, all the money that we've done, is all going to go. I'm going to give it to you. I don't care. It's not my place. You know what? I got a phone call. It just reminded me that that person yesterday was. He called me and said, my wife's coming down with the $20,000, just wait. I was just about to leave. Okay, it was 12 something. My wife was just on the way down. That was Friday. <laughs> She's coming your way. What do you think happened? I said, praise the Lord! No, I wasn't able to say praise the Lord. I was so angry. I said, thank you. And I told Sister Mary, you wait for him. You wait for her, you take it to the lawyer. As soon as she come here, take it, you run to the lawyer. And I went, I was so angry. I was so angry. I said, God, why do you have to do this to me? Why? Why am I, why am I here in the first place? And why didn't you work it out? Why do you have to do it at this last minute that I'm willing to let go? Ah. See, God knows. See, sometimes God testing us. He knows I can do it my own. See? He knew I could have pulled it out of my own. There is no longer it's God. No? So he had to wait on God. I said, I am willing to let it go. I'm willing to lose everything. God, you do it. Soon as I let it go completely, God was like, See, God prepared all. He's just waiting for us to be obedient. You know? Even if one day I have, I could have put my own way. Can I run to the bank? No problem. See? But God waited. Until I said, okay, I'm willing to let go. For four hours, I got, I, until from here to the camp room, I couldn't praise him. I was only, all I did, I said, God, why? Why did you have to do this to me? Huh? Did you have to put me in this kind of situation where you have to prove that you're not? I was arguing with him. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say a word to me. Nothing. Silence. I got in the camera, I began to wait before the Lord. I began to thank Him, you know. Then I realized what God was doing. See, sometimes God would ask to that. Why? He wants to know, are you faithful? Are you willing to take the risk? Are, will, are you willing to take that kind of a risk? No. Faith, it takes a risk. Faith without risk is not faith. Do you know that? You say, well, I have faith. That faith sometimes takes that place. What did God, Jesus said, walk on the water. What do you think Peter was doing? You think Peter was went to the trance that he didn't see the water? Oh, of course he saw the water. But yet, he took that faith to put down his feet on it. That's taking risk. We need that. Huh? And sometimes God put us, take us to those places, see how you will do it. This Eliezer, who was a very faithful servant, is willing to go. He trusts his masters, God of his master, without a doubt. Let me ask you, what kind of trust you have with God? Half doubt, half trust, 
happen okay, don't happen also fine, because I know he doesn't want to listen to me. Is that what it is? Then I can tell you, you're going nowhere. You have, will not experience the miracles. You cannot, because your heart is a half hearted. Eliezer, willing to go, he took the, all of that and uh, instead of he run, 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 run away with it, but he go, okay? He was uh, truthful and he was uh, faithful to his master. And not only he believed his master, but he believed his God of his master. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. You see, he could have said, Master, wait a minute, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a, the right person to say. Maybe you should send someone else. Uh, what if I screw up? What are you going to do? Are you going to scold me? This is what we do, right? What if I screw up, Master? Eliezer was willing to go. Oh. He was willing to go. How many of you are willing to serve God? How many of you are willing to trust Him? How many of you are willing to say, I will follow you? How many of you are willing to say, Lord, I will obey? Obey doesn't come just like that, you know? Some people think, oh, okay, I, I come to church, I got prayer, I'm in fear, then I will obey. Whoa, this is not some kind of, you know, huh? factory where we produce a robot things and all different kinds of robots. Okay? It takes a willingness. It takes a willingness. Brother Ben said, well, you know, night like last night, huh? It was wonderful that he really felt that the glory of God was filling this place. He felt the reward, right? He felt faith that he's in place like this. What if it's not happening? Hmm? Question. What if you don't always enjoy it? What if you come here and you get beat up and you get, you know, cursed? What are you going to do? You're going to curse back? Willingness, you know? Willingness. Doesn't matter. We're not living with the, the little, you know, short moment of that high feeling, right? That's not what we look for, right? We are here because we love the Lord. We are here because we trust Him. Huh? We are here because we want to experience God. Because we can. Switch out the place. We are here because we know who God is in our life. So willingness. <coughs> See? Another secret thing of Elijah is this. He always prayed to, as I said, refer to God of Abraham. <coughs> How many of you come and say, God of Potters? <laughs> huh? God of Potters, please listen to me. Why not? I pray like that too, God. Be the provider of promise. God, please answer. Often I, not often actually, every time I say, where do you go? Where is your church? Instead I say, where's that kind of cost? I say, Paulus Place. I went to my, uh, you know, you know, our district meeting. They refer to as a Paulus Place mission. In fact, Paulus Place has nothing to do with our, uh, our district. You know? Why? Because I always say, I was place vision. This is a place where God moves, God works, huh? God manifests every day. What about you? Are you here just because it gives you that little feeling of that high? Coming here, you feel a little high because people say, Oh, you're so good. Are you here because God called? Huh? How many of us are willing to look into ourselves and see how truthful we are before the Lord? Huh? How many of us are willing to say, looking into ourselves and say, How much are we faithful? Huh? And how much are we obedient to what God is saying to us? Are we here because we feel like to be here? Are you here because of a, you feel like that you need to be here? Are you here because God has called you to this place? That's the difference. God has called you 
Huh? And God is the wants to God wants to use every gift, the ability that He has given to you to use it in here. And you need to give it to the God. You need to give it to His ministry. You need to give it to His for the, His own glory. Often people think, well, it's mine. This gift is mine. Now keep keep saying it's yours. It will, God will take away. And you have nothing left. God has given us the talent. God has given us the gift. Okay? How much are you going to use that for the glory of God? How much are you coming to say, God, I'm willing to use? Many who have a gift are holding it. I don't want to use it because I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be here or not. I don't care whether you're going to be here or not. Why don't you just come and give it to God? Talk. Say, Lord, take it and use it. If God can use it here, God can use it somewhere else. God can use it anywhere you go. But are you willing to let it go? Are you willing to bring it out to God and say, Look, here is mine. Please use it. No, oh, you're going to hold it and say, Wait a minute, God. If you come and you come and show me a magnificent thing, then I come. Our God is so gracious, you know, that he, I wonder why he didn't wreck myself. <laughs> let me ask you a question. If God begins to wreck myself, can we wreck? Do you think you. You won't be there now. You, you won't be the one that is going to be like you or you think you're your next person. So we ask ourselves, so each other's, <laughs> asking to each other's, do you think it's you or me? Think about it. Laser. As I was reading, you know, he had every chance to walk away and live comfortably and be happy. Okay? He could, he could put every reason God, well, Abraham, I've been working for all my life on your service. I deserve this. I deserve this. All the good things on that ten camel. I deserve it. I could walk away. Because he won't when you go there. And uh, you know, when you meet the girl and you're gonna give her everything away, he's gonna come back with that, nothing but the girl. And he's gonna go back to the servant again. What do you think his life would happen if he, if he did that? Huh? You think he would be happy with all the good things he had? I don't think so. I think his life would be miserable, there's no peace, no happiness, no joy, no fullness there. Living in misery, I will die there. But because of everything he did according to what his master said, when he came back, huh? when he fulfilled his mission, is to go there, find the wife, brother Rebecca, to the Isaac. The whole place was silent. Uh, Isaac was able to have a wife that he wanted, and they were, he, his mission was to fulfill that, Edward, that Abraham gave to him. So, don't you think Abraham rewarded him? The greatest thing is that the joy that Elijah ran into the Abraham's family by fulfilling. By fulfilling. What do you want? What do you want? What are you looking for? Our musician to come. You want a blessing. People want a blessing. But let me tell you, what kind of blessing like, you know, and say, God just give it to me because I'm not a child? God said, no, wait a minute. You do your part. Uh, what? Be honest. You want a blessing? You have to be honest. Huh? I can put up everything I took and trust you with all. You need to be honest. This servant of Abraham, Elijah, did not take a single, I was a penny, I'm not sure whether they had a penny, but even a single minute. But it was fulfilled. You see, we are in the journey of that. God has called us on this earth to do, fulfill this earth. Will. God has called you and I to finish up the work that He has left for us. The altar will be sidetracked. 
A mountain, you're looking into the world, oh, so nice. You're looking into that, it's oh, so beautiful. Sidetrack. But let me tell you. Secret of releasing the blessing is you be honest before God. Be honest with God. And come to today, today as this communion table. Ask God, Lord, what am I? Who am I? Am I honest? No? You need to ask that. Am I faithful to you? Are you faithful to God? Ask Him, am I faithful? Am I living for myself? I'm so, you know, Lord, just caught up with all the things. I don't know where I'm going. Today's the day you need to ask God, are you faithful? Ask, Lord, am I faithful to you? Am I doing the right things? Am I obedient to you? Do you want a blessing? Say, Lord, am I obedient to what you asked me to do? Or am I still running towards my own way? You can if you want to. Okay. See? We have... We have everything that we want. And yet, God wants to bless us more. He wants to bless us more. He wants to take us further so that you can glorify Him. Some people think, well, if I'm so rich, God cannot be glorified. Let me tell you, if you as children of God, you will live your life begging every day, that is truly not glorifying God. That's not God's way of living. That you're mocking God's name. Let me tell you that. You're mocking God's name. God has given you the life, salvation, and the greater things. After the life, after we leave this world, He, he promised us. But not only that, and not only after your death, but He's willing to bless you here. We don't have to look in for the enemies all the time. We look for the blessing of God in our lives. Live according to His ways. You will be blessed. Honest, be honest with God. Be faithful to God's His word. And be obedient. Obedience. You say, I'm not faithful, but you're not obedient. You are contradicting yourself. You're not faithful. If you are obedient, then you will follow the way God wants you to do. And as you take that first step, I can tell you. God will bless every step. Your children, huh? and all the things that you do. As parents, what do we do? Woman? No. We want our kids to do well. You want them? Walk. Obedience. Obedience. God said. Obedience is better than the sacrifices. That's man of what you do for him. You're not obedient to God. He said, it's useless. He said to David, don't bring in the thousands of wolves. Huh? Don't do a share on all those animals. Just come and love me and do what, you are, what I ask you to do. Be obedient. Be obedient. As we come to the table, I want you to ask this question to God. Every head bow. Every eye closed. Now it's time I want you to ask God. Put everything aside and say, Lord, have I been honest? Honest with you, Father, and honest with me. Inside of you, inside of me. Lord, have I been faithful for what you have called me? You cannot be faithful without being obedient. I don't know what you do with God. What kind of deal that you have brought to His presence. I don't know. But He's asking you today. You need to make right with God if you come to the communion. You need to be right with God as the Lord. Search me. Just what David might pray. David cried out to God and said, Search me, O God. Search me. And let all my iniquities, Lord, just burn it up. You can say that to God today. 
Lord, our mind is iniquities, our disobedience. Through my mind, my thinking, and through my heart, my action. God, you got forgive me, wash me. Lord, you wash us. I'm sorry what I did. I'm going to be okay today and tomorrow. I'm going to go and do it again. No. Say, Lord, touch me. You search my heart and Lord, you touch me today. Purifies me. Cleanses me. Make me all. That I never look to this world. But Lord, I look towards you. I will be obedient towards what you say. And I will be faithful whatever circumstances I face. I will be faithful to you. And Lord, I'll be honest. I will be honest. Before you and before me. So no, nothing that will hinder my relationship with you, my worship to you. Pray, church. Ask the Lord right now. Don't let
critical. Don't count. Don't let the condemnation come into you and say, no, you cannot. You are useless. Don't listen to that. Father, right now, rebuke that condemnation. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Be gone in Jesus. Oh, Lord, with your grace, with your grace, wash us. With your grace, Lord, you cleanse us. Oh, Ramasanda. Tell the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, stand before you. And Lord, I ask you to come. Every little secret of darkness is delivered to you. Because Father, those are the seed of iniquities. And Lord, we bring it, we remove everything on your feet, Jesus. Take it and cleanse us. Oh, Ramashan. Don't let this Satan come and you're not good enough. 
You are the child of God. You are purchased by the blood of Jesus. You are purchased by the broken body of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And the same way after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Some say that our sin cannot be forgiven. Some can be forgiven, some cannot be forgiven. But let me tell you, every sin has been forgiven. His blood is shed. His blood flowed from Calvary all the way down to the haste. This promise place today. And His blood saved you are cleansed. And you are cleansed. And you are cleansed. And you are now white as snow. As we partake this together, and you are sick in your body, put your hands on your heart and let claim today. Say, Lord, thank you for healing my body. Claim and let us drink together. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to thank the Lord. Church, I want you to raise your voice to God and say, Thank you. God, thank you. God, thank you. Thank you. Right now. Thank you. Say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for healing my body. Jesus, mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.